Hello everyone, my name is Elliot and welcome back to Hush Hush. It is, um... We are past it. Oh boy. Oh yeah. Yeah. Aside from that, we got this to do. But for now, let's, uh... Let's go to the park. As you arrive at the park, the rain begins to let up a little. The dark storm should the dark storm shroud gives away to gives way to swaths of mean mendering drizzling inky clouds. As you step out of your car, you see Elle waiting on a park bench. She's twirling a pink parasol. Which is much too frilly to be of any practical purpose. When she sees you, she waves excitedly and rushes over. Hello! Good afternoon! I'm so happy you had time for a walk today. The company is rather wonderful. I find it's quite challenging having an engaging conversation with just yourself. Also, people tend to stare. <laughs> How are you today? <coughs> uh... <laughs> see where my skills are at right now. I am way above 60, so... Wow, I don't know what it is, but you look sort of sparkling today. Ah, uh, wait a minute. Uh. Oh, Blasherson turns away suddenly. She comes to me my ear and smells of Ashley. Shut up! Well, of all the things that could be any particular day, Sparkly is probably one of my favorites. Shall we walk? Or stroll? I think I would prefer a stroll. <laughs> Being a sparkling, I have sparkling water. <laughs> That's gonna look weird in post. Elle bends her elbow, offering you to take it. You hook your arm in hers, and she hugs you tightly to herself for a moment. The two of you stroll at the park for a short while, talk, talking mostly about the weather and how best to dress during a tropical storm. When you're around the corner, you just, when you're around the corner and see Dimitri from the coffee shop handing out free coffee samples. Ah, my friends, please come to me. Bring me your happy faces, for I would like to pour coffee in them. <laughs> Hello, Dimitri. How are you today? Oh, Miss L, I am so wonderful, and even more so now that you have strolled in my path. But, wait, what is this? Perhaps Dimitri is interrupting a special moment. The two of you... You are, how do we say, lovers? <laughs> Elle suddenly freezes in surprise and shock. She grips your arm tighter, but you see the color drain from, from her face, clearly embarrassed. You see, Dimitri. Now Elle's <coughs> face turns a bright shade of red and seems to grow redder with each moment. Oh boy. <laughs> there is certainly much to love about Elle, but I would say we are closer to sweethearts right now. Gasps slightly to any words, but she needs to shake her out of her self-conscious panic attack. Oh, yes, of course. Excuse me. I did not mean to use such a powerful term. So often I am calling everyone lovers. My customers, my plumber, my banker. Elle hugs her arm to herself 
He smiles serenely at Dimitri. Yes, Dimitri. Love is a strong word, but I look forward to saying it someday. Aha, yes, Miss L. We all do. And may we all find it someday. Here, have two samples of the best coffee in the park. Drink it and enjoy life. You know, take the drinks and continue on your walk. Yay, plus five. How it clings to you warmly for the whole trip. Kisses you softly goodbye when she leaves, drilling her parasol. Okay, it's the afternoon. Let's see what we got. Yeah, that was death achievement. Oh boy. Let's do it. Dropping by the Queen Bean once again, you happen upon a less busy time. You can see Dimitri and Lotus through the door. Very lightly in for another Lotus Vesson. Hold on, let me see. Let's, you step inside and sure enough, Dimitri announces you with an with open, zar, open arms and obvious joy. Ah, there you are. The Cyrano of Sabrosa. The Casanova of... also Sabrosa. Lotus, the Hello. love doctor has returned. Hello. Lotus appears from the kitchen. Dimitri, I told you already, no more Lotus lessons. I'm seeing someone now. I got a day all on my own. And it's nice. And I don't need to flirt with strangers anymore. So please. Just serve our special friend like a normal, helpful, attentive barista. Ah, but Lotus, that is exactly my point. You have taken the skills you have learned and done well with them. But you must be ready for the road ahead. The last three lessons, the people you were flirting with were all very into you. It is time for you to flirt. With a grouchy person. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Look, our friend just wants a coffee, yes? We are all done with the lotus lessons. What the fuck? 25 motivation? Bruh. <clears throat> Anyways, come on, Lotus. You've done the lessons. It's time for your final exam. Were we supposed to take notes on this? Lotus pursues her lips in contemplation. She scratches her back of her neck, the back of her neck for a moment, in deep in thought, and gives you a nod. Okay, one last lesson. The final exam. Yes, haha. <laughs> this will be our finest hour. All right. Here is what Dimitri is thinking. There is a certain customer that comes in every week at a certain time. She is, how do you say, very prickly. No! You're not talking about Liliana, are you? Dimitri, she hates me! She hates everyone! She's always so rude and cold! Yes. The last time I mentioned her eyes were like moonlight in the starry sky. She threatened to kick my cojones up the door. <laughs> she is fine. She is passion. And she is also a bitch. Thank you. She is perfect for your final challenge. Dimitri, there's no way I can flirt with someone like that. She's likely to make me cry. And I hate crying while I'm at work. Do not worry, dear sister. If she turns up the meanness, I shall step in and throw her out. No one will speak to my sister this way. Thank you, Oh? Well, 
Okay. If you got my back, Dimitri, I'll give it a go. Yes, excellent. Are you with us, friend? Let's seduce the crap out of this fiery lass. Yes, the game is afoot. It's afoot! Oh, God! Okay, we need only wait 15 minutes. Then she will be here. She is like clockwork. Yeah, she only comes in when it's super quiet. I guess she likes solitude. All right, we lay the trap, we wait. A few minutes later. <clears throat> Hola, hello, aloha. Uh, I mean, welcome to the Queen Bean. Hey, give me a double shot Americano. Absolutely. Can I interest you in a dessert? No, just a drink. Be quick. Oh, uh, okay. Signal to compliment her abs. Signal to introduce yourself. Signal that it's on the house. Signal. Okay. <clears throat> Dimitri will get your drink. Hi, my name is Lotus. Yeah, I know your name. You've worked here forever. Yes, but I never introduced myself to you properly. I think, um... It's a good way to show respect! I just never had the nerve to! Alright, Lotus. I'm Liliana. There, introduced. Very nice to finally meet you properly. So what's the damage? Excuse me? Sorry? What do I owe you? How much is the coffee? Oh, sorry. Double shot Americano. That'll be five dollars. Five dollars? Get out of here. What now? Uh, da -da 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 -da. So I'm gonna ask for your name and number. Ask her out. If you help her out, you'll be part of some form of gang. Uh, that's it. As if you can help her. I thought it was Asher for a name and number, but okay. As if you can help her out. Hey, um, while Dimitri is getting our drink, can I ask you a question? Uh, sure. Is there anything I can do to make your day better? What the hell are you talking about? It's just that you come in here a lot and I think you're beautiful and interesting and mysterious. Honestly, I probably built up a little crush on you. But you always seem so out of sorts. I'm not sure. I don't want to pry, but I thought maybe I'll ask if I can help. Maybe we can grab a drink sometime or just chat. Listen, that's awfully sweet of you. Normally, I would punch any prick who tried to get into my business. But you seem truly, honestly nice, so I'm giving you a pass. The kinds of problems I got, you can't help with. And a girl like you, you don't want to get mixed up with a girl like me. Thanks for the offer. I can tell you've got a good heart. And a body I wouldn't mind pinning to a bed for some fun. What did he say? But let's keep this professional. Okay. Thank you for telling me all that. Yeah. Here you are. A double shot Americano. Made with loving hands. Great. The last pick is signal for her to write a number. Signal for her to do nothing. <laughs> Why would I signal her to do nothing? 
for not to do nothing, but it would with the main character just yeah. <laughs> Where you just go yeah. <laughs> uh, Signal for her to write her number. Okay, here, just a sec. Uh, you don't need to write my name on it. Here's my number, just in case you change your mind. Have a great day, Liliana. Alright, cool. Don't hold your breath, though. Later. Woohoo! <sighs> <sighs> Jesus Christ. Mariana pushes her way through the door and walks away down the street. After a few moments. Sweet but... melody, that was intense. I almost beat a little. But Lotus, you did so good. I did, didn't I? She didn't threaten or yell at me? She didn't tell me she was gonna slap my boobs off or whatever. Yeah. It was exceptional. You truly have become a master of the fine art of flirting. That was actually fun. I didn't feel too scared. You know, I was sure she was going to reject me at any moment. Or worse. Thank you, you two. I actually do feel like I've learned a lot. Even just being brave enough to blur something out can sometimes work. I have never been so proud of you. Except that time you won that spelling bee. Dimitri, I was five years old back then. Yes, and the word fuchsia is very hard to spell. Goodness gracious, Dimitri. Any choice, nice. This was fun. I actually enjoyed these, despite having no idea what I was doing. You mean, you were only just giving me random ideas? I thought you were some sort of law master or something. <laughs> Aha! The true final lesson of love. No one knows what they're doing. Everyone is just stumbling around making the jackass of themselves, hoping something works. True. I do so love the language of love. Right. Let me go get you a free coffee for stumbling me through all these lessons. Woohoo! I already have a Here you are! A cup of my super brew supreme! Yeah. And thank you one last time, my friend. I have never seen such confidence in my sister. Surely you have helped her level up her love stat. <laughs> I don't know if I go that far, but... Thanks again. Having you drop in all this month has been fun and terrifying. Again? Just like love. Come see us again! But no more lessons. That was the last one. At long last, my sister. I agree. Finally. Okay, let's get ready for the rush, Dimitri. Today I shall do the impossible. I shall clean the bathrooms. Oh, you know that's my least favorite job. Yes, you have earned not having to scrub the toilets today. Take care, my friend. See you again! Adios, amigos. You step outside and take a sip of the Super Broom Supreme. It rejuvenates you like no other. Booyah. You feel ready to face every challenge ahead. Well... Hey, what's up? I'm going to be doing a stream tonight. Oh boy, if you're feeling up to it, I'd like you to watch it. Okay, just so everything is out the open, out in the open. I want you to see me. 
Okay. But you don't have to, I respect whatever you want to do. I'll send you a link. Talk soon. Okay. What's up? Hi. I just heard the news. On the news that we're supposed to calm down a bit this morning. And I feel like much taking a walk. I haven't cooked up and if you my umbrella's big enough for the two of us. We can make it if we try it. It'll protect you from the element. Oh my god. Okay, now my face hurts from smiling. I will spare you from further puns. See you. Okay. Okay. Let's do this. Hold on. Bing! Let me just save this. Let's go to... What is this? Cassie Chapter 4. Exactly 24 hours later, Elliot's on another D. You drive up to the mall to pick Cassie, to pick up Cassie, after she insisted last minute that she needed to get her hair done. Luckily, it's not very busy and you find a loading zone to park in temporarily while, to park in temporarily while we wait for her. Surprisingly, she steps out of the front entrance just as you pull up. For a moment, you don't recognize her. Obviously, somewhat self-conscious. Cassie walks over to the car with her hands folded in front of her. She looks amazing! Good evening! Are you the carriage I sent for? Beautiful as hell. Be oh my god. Beautiful as always. But breathtaking in particular. Oh gosh, you're gonna make me blush! You really know how to make a girl feel wanted. You know that? Well, I'm starved. It's been a coffee and gummy bear kind of day. I need protein stat! <laughs> Yeesh. The drive out to the winery is pleasant, although the weather has been rainy recently. Today the air is calm and brisk. Cassie puts on a few songs she wants you to listen to and sings along. A lot of classic rock and trashy pop songs. Just Keep on playing the classic rock songs. I'll survive with those. At one point, she leans way, way over to smell your cheek. Then she compliments your deodorant and gives you a smooch. I use Axe Body Spray. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She finds this particularly funny and lasts the for the last six or seven minutes of the drive. You go over here. When you arrive at the ri at winery, oh my god, it's much more chill than usual. There are no fancy parties. Oh my god. And the small restaurant has set up tables throughout the vineyard for extra ambiance. This is pretty. to the table, Cassie appears nervous. Good lord, look at this place tonight. I've got everything all fancy tonight. Oh, look at the lights. Hey, listen, um, I just wanted to say thanks for taking me out again. I know our last date had its bumps, but you're a real trooper for sticking with me. Mm -hmm. 
I'm mostly looking for a good reason to dress up and show off, uh, show off the goods. <laughs> I know it! I'm just a bit of arm candy for you to accessorize with. Well, either way, you look smoking hot yourself. So as long as those muscly arms find their way around me at some point, it's gonna be a good night. The two of you sit, and the waiter pours you, you each some wine. You can tell Cassie is somewhat uncomfortable as she fidgets and pulls, pulls out her own hair. She notices you, she notices you noticing her and stops. She immediately has a sheepish look. I'm sorry, I'm just so worried about doing something wrong or saying something wrong. When I was really young, took me out to a real fancy place and told me I could order anything I wanted. So I decided to order pizza. Because, you know, pizza is fucking great! But when I said it, she gasped super loud and the waiter laughed at me. And then they both gave me lectures on how that's not the kind of food you order at fancy places. The other night, when I joked about ordering cheeseburgers, well, that was my sorry attempt to be charming and mischievous. I swear I'm developing a complex now. Fancy places make me nervous. Don't be nervous. You're beautiful, sharp, ferocious, and utterly charming. You notice she twirls her hair a little and looks away. Bashful look you've never really, never really seen before. What are you trying to do to me over here? You're gonna make me blush redder than a radish! Jeez, Alu. You're, you're sweet. And quite observant, I must say. We'd better make with some small talk before I hyperventilate or something. So, how's, how's work going? Great. Things have actually been pretty tense lately. Apparently, there's been extra heat on the higher ups. Too much attention from the wrong people. Luckily, not much of that reaches down to me. I'm just a pretty face doing my job. Now, if I was a ladder climber like Liliana, oh, I'd be feeling burned for sure. What's the deal with Liliana? What's the deal with Evanescence? <laughs> what, like, is she available? You maybe want me to give you her number so you can hit her up for a booty call sometime? Maybe. <laughs> Calm yourself. You're getting that, oh shit, Cassie's getting heated, look. <laughs> I don't know how to say this. She's in charge of my little team around here. I treat her like dirt, but that's just because she's rude as a cat with its ass stuck in a tin can. Tough bitch, though. I saw her break a dude's nose with her nose. What? What the fuck? I wonder if they have good prosecco here. I noticed you didn't quite acquire your dress tonight as usual. <laughs> oh, you may be observant that I wasn't a complete piece of trash just before our date started. No. Well, thanks for noticing. I've been trying to clean up my act a bit. Get off the naughty list. Of course I'm doing it to impress someone. I'm hoping they find me more attractive and do things with me in bed. See this eye? It's winking. I'm winking at you. <laughs> By the way, I noticed that noticed a lot more than that. I'm actually still looking. Dude, calm the fuck down. Cassie pulls her menu up over her mouth, looking around to see if anyone heard you. For pointing an accusing finger at you. You behave yourself. You're supposed to look more quietly. Although I would like.
like to point out that this is an awful window shop. I fully expected you to get your fingerprints on the glass later. Now behave yourself. A waiter sure taking their time. How's Alice D doing recently? Oh god, that girl. She's fine. Literally made of stone. Nothing gets under her skin. Liliana so much growls at me, and I'm in a whirling dervish of anger and contempt all day. But last week, Alice literally gets robbed at knife point. She's laughing about an hour later. She's made of stern stuff. Only it's also really sad. Because I mean, let's face it. Don't mention it. There we go. <laughs> I can't tell if you two are tight or just colleagues. <laughs> Colleague is a five dollar word to describe our working relationship. We're accomplices. Hmm. By the way, if this is some wacky way to inquire if I'd be down with three someone you two, the answer is no. I wasn't. Well, I can assure you she would be. With bells and ropes and whatever Quasimodo bullshit you want to throw in. I'm way too vanilla for the likes of her. A waiter sure taking their time. You said that like two minutes ago. Any choices and pick the last question on here. to take your orders. Cassie immediately becomes more nervous, pulling your hair again. You got this, girl. You got this. Cassie looks over at you, seemingly in surprise. She lets out a chuckle and rolls her shoulders, trying to relieve tension. You place your order, and Cassie takes a deep breath. Um, beg your pardon, sir. I'm, I'm not very good at reading French. Some of this looks more Italian and French, so now I'm second guessing what I'm reading. Can you tell me what the Neapolitan Margarita Esposito is? What? The waiter tells it's a flatbread margarita prepared in a wood fire oven. Wood fire oven? How's Pizza gonna get a job now? It's, it's a pizza. Cassie looks to her menu for almost son, and she bursts into a oh. Play a laugh track. <laughs> yeah, the waiter fidgets a little uncomfortably, but waits for the two of you to finish. Before she's finished, Cassie rises from her spot and walks over to you. She's not laughing so hard, there are tears in her eyes. She places her hand on the desk, but she's no misbreath. When she reaches your side of the table, she leans in. Not in front of the waiter! Oh god, I can't believe it! I beg your pardon, good sir. That was a bit of an inside joke. I would very much like to order your fancy pizza. Waiter smiles, smiles broadly, writes it down, and reminds you that the vineyard is for joy and romance. 
she puts off, and Cassie erases her glance. Here's the joy in romance, I guess. Here's to you. Right back at you, sweet cheeks. I haven't been called that in years. The dinner goes well. Cassie raises, raves over the fancy pizza, calls it God's gift to the world. <laughs> it's the second coming of Jesus. The true second coming. At one point, soft music begins to play on the speakers, hidden in the vines. Cassie sighs happily. You want to dance? Just a little bit? This is the most romantic junk I've ever seen, and I want to have the full experience. Yes, be a gentleman! I warn you, I'm wearing two left heels. How? <laughs> if I step on you, those heels are sharp. They're going straight through. This is... This is so nice. I wish... This is how it always was. <laughs> Look at me. You're turning me soft. And I'm letting you... I didn't do anything. I was just nice to, to a pretty girl. Now see, that just proves my point. How was someone not supposed to fall for someone else when that's the way they talk to them? Cassie goes quiet for a while, and you catch out the of the corner of your eye that she's holding a sad case as you dance. After a few moments, just as you're considering to say something, she whispers something. Can I tell you why? Why I'm not soft? It's not a happy story. Problems, and my stepdad was a drinker. Don't worry, he didn't put his hands on me or nothing. But he sure didn't like me. Even when I was seven, I was full of fire and brimstone, and I let him have it. We used to scream at each other so late and so long that the cops would drop by to break it up. Our nearest neighbors were almost a thousand feet from us. We were loud! Anyway, I started getting into trouble in and out of school. Started skipping school. Started hanging around bad people. And my stepdad, well, he had had enough. He kicked me out. I spit in his face and he clocked me good. I had a black eye for a month. But I gave him one too before I ran off. So as far as I'm concerned, I came out ahead in that fight. I'm sure it was just a phase. And you even out into a fancy gal. Ha! No. But I sure have some regrets years later. I'm sure you do. Anyway, I was out on my ass with no money, no place, no nothing. So I left the ponies and came to town, looking for a place to go. And that's when I met Mel. Mel found me in a bus station, stealing quarters out of the candy machines, and chasing off the animals, offering me five dollars for a good time. She took me in and fed me pizza. Stale, but you know, pizza. Pizza. Mel was older than me. I think she was 40. 
but she lived on the streets and did her best to help anyone she could stay warm and dry. She was good people. Sounds of it, I would not compare to her. I am lazy and sp Oh, Jesus, that's... Damn it, now I want to cry. <laughs> hey, just take a compliment, would ya? I bumped at Mel's place for almost four years. She made sure I never ended up in some hoops menagerie doing hard drugs under the overpass for an escape. She was my fucking guardian angel. <laughs> One day, there was a lump right here. Jazzy pokes you in the chest just be... the old G cancer. It was part of a gang. The rest held this rib. Things went from bad to worse real fast. And just the ride to the hospital alone took all the money she had. And she was just about making up her mind not to fight it. When I told her not to worry, if she fought I'd fight, too. If she hung in there, I would figure out the money. I would look after her. I would take care of her and make her soup and change her fucking diapers if I needed to. Because I loved her so much. So I did. I found the money. And got a house already. Put ramps in and bars near the toilet and everything. This is kind of true.
may just write it on text. in all this out loud. Anyway, I was left without anywhere to go and a pretty big bill to settle. The hospital was going to learn a bunch of it, but then they would have looked into where it came from in the first place, and... Well, I didn't get the money from no guardian angel, I'll tell you that. Hmm. Yeah, you got it. Bit of a get paid first, work later sort of arrangement. I owe a lot of money to these people, and I can't skip town or else. Well, let's just say they have their own way of collecting debts. I just wanted you to know. I trust you, and I guess. I wanted you to know what was going on. Why I made some of my decisions. You know? I play stupid games, win stupid prizes, I guess. And if you think any less of me for any of this, I hope maybe seeing more of the picture will explain some of it. I just needed someone to tell. Or just the charming person who decided to drop into my life. Like an angel. Jesus. It's not about a game that I'm crying about. It's... It's half this and half of... What happened... A year ago. I just didn't want to say it out loud because I didn't want to cry out loud. <sighs> Cassie leans against her shoulder again. <sighs> oh my god, it's really getting to me. And if you would dance a while longer. in each other's arms and a song pops on the bill of swinging wakes Cassie wakes Cassie from a dreamy stupor support oh whoa look at the time we've been awkwardly making circles for a while now I should get home I've got a meeting tonight an important one <laughs> can we split You bet. I'll settle up. Awesome. I'll meet you at the car. I've got to check my makeup. Cassie is, for the most part, for most of the ride, right home. Cassie's quiet for most of the ride home. She stares out the window. She stares out the window at the sky, which has become once more clouded, as the forecast mentioned. Oh boy, rain. Wait, what? It's gonna be a bad storm this year. Hey, mouse, work. I get this feeling in my knees. The worse it is, the worse the storm will be. I'm gonna be one wise-ass witch living in the woods someday. I promise you that. When you arrive at her place, an apartment above the pizzeria, Casey looks at you with a strange expression of sadness and desire. She leans over in her car seat and kisses you. She rubs the side of her thumb along your jawline, and for a moment, she she's your entire robe. That's cool. When she finishes. 
She looks at you and smiles. Then she frowns. Maybe. Might be best for us to break up. look at the people around us and I'm afraid there's some stuff they're gonna find out about me that'll make me unemployable everyone is not in the game there's a good chance of getting hurt now and I don't want that I can't stand the thought of you getting hurt so I want you to know how I feel then I want you to walk away. And let me in the game. I'm not leaving you. No! There's no way I'm letting you throw all the good stuff in your life away. Listen to me. You're a good person. It's stupid life I'm living. It's because I'm not. I've done messed up shit. And now I'm paying for it. It's only bad people over here. Bad people and desperate people. And you're neither of those things. Don't be stupid. Just say goodbye to me. Kiss me and let's be done with it. I can handle myself. Don't worry. Cassie pulls pulls away to resist your kiss. Utterly fierce that you would kiss her at a time like this. <laughs> That's very worrying. <laughs> oh, yeah, but you slip your arm around her waist and keep the awkwardness rolling. As you and as you predicted, in a moment she melts and kisses you back. Damn it, I'm close. In fact, for a few dreamy moments, her kisses become rather passionate and have a tip me, I'm yours vibe. But a moment later, she finally pulls away. And what does she say now? God damn you. All right. But only because. I like you. Cassie pushes you as far as she can, being seated next to you, and thinks. As though you might tackle her while she's distracted. What? Alright, um. I need you to know that this was the worst decision of my life. But I'm not gonna stop you from making it. I just want you to know. I don't think it's worth it. For me. But I'll... Let you make the decision. Go home. Think about it. And if you decide you want in... What does it say? Come to this address in two hours. Two hours. Make you do things if you want to join. And I don't know how bad they'll be about it. I'll see you in two hours. Think about it. And don't come looking all sexy. Dress down. I'll see you soon. Well, for this portion, I think he's time to, to break this guy out again. You go home to change and to prepare. Cole is here playing with the cord of the kitchen blinds. She seems happy. That donut on the table, man. You decide to take most of the cards out of your wallet and pack a knife. 
You're not sure if it's a good idea or a bad idea. Probably both. After enough time passes, you get back into your car and drive to the address Cassie gave you. During the drive, the rain comes and goes. At one moment, gentle, almost non-existent. The next, in a wild crescendo. As though the storm is selectively angry at the world, lashing out mad as hell, and then going quiet. You cross several train tracks to reach your, des to reach your destination. The back of your mind makes a wrong side of the tracks joke you don't find particularly funny. I don't find any joke particularly funny at this moment. Finally, the place you're heading to comes into view. It's a large floating warehouse, obviously abandoned. As you step out of your car, you can hear sounds coming from inside. Music, yelling. You walk up and cautiously look inside. What's cooking good looking? As his voice tells you, and you fly for a moment. So, I wasn't really expecting this to happen. Cassie's been saying you're neat meat, that you want to join the family business and make a name for yourself, or something. True. True enough, I guess. I see. Well, tell me, did Cassie tell you that she considers this the worst decision of her life? Did she happen to mention that were it not for an unfortunate and untimely closure of the strip club I used to work at, I would also have avoided this line of work like the plague. And did she mention that there are no health or dental benefits? If none of that scares you away, then follow me. God. Oh, Jesus. Even looking at this photo gives me dread. Alice brings you into the warehouse where you see a group of delinquents hanging out. Most of them are smoking, hanging out. Hanging out on an old couch at a nearby table. You see Liliana talking to someone with several rolls of money in front of her. Cassie is with Liliana, standing behind her in her jacket and cap. She's a bit of a trophy around here. Cassie, I mean. Oh. All the kids have a thing for her, but they're more afraid of Liliana. They learn pretty quick not to mix business and pleasure. Though they don't know it, but Cassie can take care of herself. She could do it on her own. Hey, fair enough. I'm with you. Just be ready, cuz. Well, I almost said they like to play for keeps, but no one is playing here. Careful. We've got the odd psycho running around, always out for blood. Hit them. At that moment, Lilia vanishes off with the person she's talking to. Cassie oh no. Cassie points points you out and Lillian and Oh god. <clears throat> the two of them walk over at Cassie, making no outward expression. Lillian looking very much like a lion about to strike. So you're the stranger. We meet. I've seen you around. Cassie tells me you want to get paid. She says you know how to keep your mouth shut. Do I? Ah, <laughs> oh, jeez. And you can fight. Is all that right? 
Where's your boss? I would so pick that. Yeah. Mm, I don't believe you. I know a bitch when I see you. Oh, great. Let's find out if I'm wrong. We gotta make sure you're not a cop. Test is a little different for everyone. Pretty straightforward. Dan, come here. One of the delinquents walk, walk over. You recognize them from your first day at the mall with Cassie. Hey, I know this bitch. I don't know who he is. <laughs> Shut up. Hey. Dan is also new. He just joined last week. He also turned 17 last week. I want you two to fight. Whoever wins moves on to the next round. What? But I already... You know what? Fuck it. You want me to beat the shit out of this punk? That's a big fuck yeah from me. He's just a kid! I'd so select this. <laughs> Try not to swallow your tongue, kid. Jesus Christ. He's just a kid! Yeah, that's why it's illegal. Make it happen. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I owe you this from a few weeks ago. You're gonna bleed, bitch. Okay, that's terrible. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> As Dan comes to you with a punch, you duck low and tackle him. At first, he laughs, bringing his fist down on your back, widening his stance to avoid falling. And you execute a perfect suplex. You slam Dan on the ground, arching your back to the fullest. Before you can recover, you can maneuver him into a rear naked choke. He tries to pull your arm away. P pull. He tries to pull your arm away, but he's no match for your strength. He taps your arm for a second, then quickly loses consciousness. I killed a kid. <laughs> what the fuck? You release before he's doing any permanent damage. Okay, Ooh, we got that out of the way. Nice moves. Thanks. Step two is easy. Oh yeah, snaps your fingers and one of the other delicas. Eh. Eh, nope. Oh out. Oh god, strangers. Lyanna well, snaps her fingers and one of the other delinquents carefully hands her a syringe. Do you know what this is? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, hey. <laughs> uh, hey. That's my mom's medicine. Weird! Funny. It's mud, up from Mexico. Take it. Stick him. What? Got it? All around you, members of the gang react with shock and surprise. Cassie gaps, and even Liliana looks shocked for a moment. Hmm. 
respect, stranger. But that's going to make this next part a lot harder. Okay, last step. Fight me. Do it, and you're in. But this isn't necessary. That H is gonna mess with them too much. You never know. Might help. Ready? You wait for Liliana to swing, and you manage to dodge her attack. Okay, so I'm good. You see a frustration flare across her expression. She swings again, but you, but you're already swinging your uppercut. You catch her on the chin. You actually manage to lift her off the ground with the force of your blow. A weaker chin. She would, have, she would have fallen unconscious. But Liliana laughs. Hey, that's a good hit. You're pretty good. 